My father's name was Earl Bonney and my mother was Vonda Bonney. My parents were of the Depression era. My dad lived in a small town in San Pete County, close to Mount Pleasant. Uh, my mom grew up on a farm ranch in southeastern Wyoming. It was very rural. They had no electricity. They had no running water. It was very, very primitive. They learned work. My dad was a construction man. He had to have things perfectly straight and perfectly level. He had an expression. There is only black and white. There is no gray. He wouldn't tolerate any untruth. My mother, with a limited education she had, she never finished high school, she had a desire to learn. And I remember as a small child, she would check books out of the library. And she checked out a book on etiquette. By the time I graduated from high school, I knew more about etiquette than most professional people do that run big conventions and stuff like that. That was one of her dreams, to be a, a lady, and she was a lady in every, every uh, sense. She wanted to learn how to make clay pottery, so she got a book on that, and she learned, and she took classes, became very proficient. She wanted to learn how to decorate cakes. She became so proficient at that that during her later years, after she and my dad retired, she made several hundred wedding cakes for different people all over town that would come to her. She never charged for her time. She'd only charge for the materials that she used. Living in Las Vegas, there's a lot of people that would come through that would need a place to stay. I was the youngest. My bed was taken by a visitor first, and then my brother. So I slept on the couch or on the living room floor many, many nights as a youngster. That's the way they were. If someone needed help, they let them in, they fed them, sent them on their way. Well, shortly after we were married, uh, I worked at the Nevada test site for a while. I worked for Larkin Plumbing in Las Vegas for almost 40 years. I was a manager the last 35 years that I was there. I did almost all of the hiring for all the 35 years I was a manager. And I would usually hire the plumber on two qualities. Number one, his expertise as a plumber, which he had to have, but also his personality as a person, because he would be alone with a lady in a house doing work for her. And uh, it's very important that you behave properly and know how to talk to people. All of life is a compromise. If you get along with someone, it's because you have the ability to compromise. And we kept our church clothes on all day, every Sunday. Sunday was the Lord's day, it was the Sabbath. I was uh, privileged to serve a mission. I served in the Brazil mission from the fall of 64 till the spring of 67. Uh, during that time, I was privileged to be present when President Hinckley, at that time, he was one of the senior apostles. He organized the first stake in South America. The first branch I served in, we had 16 members. Now there are thousands of members in that area, and not two stakes, but two missions in that same area. Uh, during my mission, I spent 15 months in one branch, uh, mainly because we were building a chapel. The person in charge of building a chapel, he did not speak Portuguese. I had to help him buy the materials, and growing up with my dad being a contractor, I knew what he was talking about. Served with several wonderful bishops, was called as a bishop myself, um, worked with some fantastic people. Two of the state presidents I worked with uh, became general authorities. Uh, after we retired, my wife and I served three missions. Our first mission headquartered in Prague in the Czech Republic. They did not have a Book of Mormon in Czech. And he explained that there were about 
14 or 15 passages that the translators could not agree on. Elder Christofferson visited the mission, but our mission president asked him to stay over and help resolve this problem. I think there were 15 or 14 or 15 translators and they were all there and each of them had a different way of translating different parts of the Book of Mormon. Now these were all in Czech. Elder Christofferson does not speak Czech. And he would say, okay, number one, you're number one, just like in a high council room. And they would go around all the different ways that particular passage could be translated. And when they got done, he would say, number nine, that's the one the Lord wants written. Then they would do another. And President Irwin, our mission president, said the whole meeting took about 20 minutes. About four months later, my wife and I were leaving the mission. We were actually walking out the mission office. And in came a delivery boy, and they were the first copies of the Book of Mormon in Czech. We received the first copy. After that, we returned to the States and the put our papers in immediately and were called to go to Alabama. And we was in the Alabama-Birmingham mission for a year and a half. We returned from there, immediately put our papers in, and were called to the Albuquerque, New Mexico mission. I know we all do struggle, and I've had challenges. Maybe a challenge would be a struggle, but it's never felt like a struggle to me. I always knew I could call on the Lord and receive His blessing. I think one of the best things you can ever do is be honest in your tithes and offerings. I don't like to use the word paying tithing. Paying, it makes it sound like it's a debt that you owe. I always like to say give tithing because that's what it is. It's a gift back to the Lord. The gospel truth that to me is more important than all is the absolute fact that God lives and that he loves us and that he cares for each one of us individually. I want my posterity to know the truth as it really is and not the truth as it advertised by people with their own agenda. The only truth that matters is God's truth. The only thing that really matters is God's love. The only thing that really matters is obedience. My purpose on earth is to do the Lord's will, to do it cheerfully with an eye single to His glory. My favorite food is all food. Now, you might think that looking at me, but I enjoy tasting different types of food. I've never had a rib cooked like they cook them in, in Alabama. I love everywhere. Everything that the Lord has made, I think, is good and has its purpose. I love the national parks I visited. And I appreciate people years ago that had the foresight to establish the national parks and preserve them for our generation. I love to read. I have uh, probably several hundred books. This is my favorite book. This is the creation of my wife. This little note down here says 2004. That's when we started doing this. It's called the Bonnie Family Legacy. And each month she makes a little newsletter for our entire family. And then each of our children have an opportunity to write what happened in their family that month. We have about four of these books so far. One of my favorite books is the autobiography of Parley P. Pratt. Uh, what an amazing guy he was. Whenever I get discouraged, I like to pick his book up and wherever I open it, he's got some kind of a challenge and he just heads right off into it and prevails somehow. We thank Theo God for a prophet. <laughs>